Hey everybody, welcome back to another Diecast Review. This is Matt Kenseth's 2009 Daytona 500 race win. Uh, uh, that's it, we got it. That's the last of the Daytona 500s I've needed. Um, I've got 2004 through 2018. Um, and in case you didn't know, I, I started watching NASCAR in 2004. That's why I, I chose um, the, the 2004 mark is where I would start the Daytona 500s just because that's where I started watching. So... Um, and then, um, yeah, it's weird. I, I started watching when I was nine years old. My dad had kind of watched, but I really just didn't really love the sport until then. So, um, but anyway, this has been the one, the one that keeps getting away, and I finally got her nabbed down. So, the 2009 500, Matt Kenseth. Um, got the race win box here, which is really neat. This I don't have any others like this for uh, Daytona 500, because the 2008 and 2010 ones are both elites, and then after that, they were all um, elites again. And they just didn't do the custom artwork like this. So um, this is the only one I have that actually has this custom artwork and stuff. It looks really cool. Even uh, 2006 and 7, I think, I had Elite. Nope, 7 I don't. Just 6. Uh, but we get the race wing card in here. Uh, it actually did finish under yellow. So it was only 152 laps long. Instead of, I think it's a, I think it's supposed to be 2. Well, I'm trying to remember what the exact mileage of this is supposed to be. Uh, either way, um, yeah, they had eight cautions, ended under rain, started at 3.30, kind of a weird start time, but uh, also does come with a pin. Uh, it's actually still wrapped up here, so to pop that out here. But there is our victory lane pin there, Matt Kenseth. I like these pins, they're kind of cool. So um, that is still in there. And then... Um, there is no winner sticker because I didn't do that till 2014, and there is no um, like confetti because uh, well, it was a rainout, so there wasn't confetti, uh, at least not on the car. Um, so anyway, let's put that box away and get on to the diecast, the part that everybody's here for. So on the diecast, it's a COT, which I love COTs, and uh, that I think was going to be primary focus of my collection will be the. 20, uh, 2008s through 2012s, and the 2004 through 2007, just kind of that range. I think I'll, uh, the Gen 6s have run their course, they're getting so low quality, but uh, on the die cast here, let's make a look down the left side, we got some race rubber all the way down our left side here, uh, nice and, you know, dirtied up, they got the race wood tires, which I really like how they're faded and, and kind of worn out, it almost feels like they they did a special type of finish on these. And a lot of the 2008, 9, and 10 race wins had that, where they, they don't have like a, a real shiny coat to them. They're really pretty flat, uh, just like that one there. So you can see the rubber on the rear tire there, uh, and around down the side. Matt Kenseth on the name rail, Sprint Cup Series. On the front, we got this nice big Fusion logo. Uh, we got rubber build up there. We got a little mark there from bump drafting and some more rubber on the hood. DeWalt. Down our right side here, we've got number 17. We've got the Sprint Cup Series, DeWalt again, Carhartt, kind of rubbed off by some wheel marks. And then here we've got the uh, the rear tire with all the markings on it. Not sure if that arrow is in the right spot. Yeah, maybe it is. It's weird because you put the jack there in the skirt, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, roof flaps do deploy. There you see it. A little bit of rubber on that roof even. Um, just the buildup from the race marks. There we can see our fuel cell in there. Let's get nice and close. There's our details and different pieces and parts that are in there. Kind of angle it like that so we can see all angles of it. It is DIN number 1545. Um, inside the front windshield, I always love these when they have these. I think that it's the uh, radio. Some radio transmitters. I'm not sure what they are. I've never quite figured that out, but... I always thought that was really neat. Something I, I think the Gen 6s are missing. I think that should be a, a mandatory thing in the cab. It just looks cool. Uh, but there you go. You can see all the engine detail there. Uh, it even gets better with the Elites. And then, um, ever you know, Gen 6, obviously, they turn it into a plastic block for ARCs. So ARCs, A-R-C. I just call them ARCs because of the name. But, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all there is to show on this one. I mean, it's a, it's a really nice die cast. It, again, finally got the 500 collection complete. And I, you know, would love to show you guys, but I'm just not at 500 yet. So uh, <laughs> when we do get to 500 subscribers, um, I will obviously feature that in the collection video. Um, I have all of them lined up. I don't have a great, I shouldn't say great. I like the way it's organized, but only I understand it because um, I have all my Daytona 500s in one place, the championship cars in one place, 
and then I've got kind of drivers mixed in and out, and there's just it's in weird sets. So it's not as organized as you know in any specific way to anyone else, but I like it the way it is, so I'm gonna keep it that way. But uh, anyway, if you have enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun jazz uh, there. Uh, turn on the notification bell so you're notified anytime there's an upload. Um, they are at Bristol this weekend. Chase Elliott's on the pole, so it should be a fun race. Looks like Harvick's fast. Looks like the Benedetto's got a good car. So can't wait to see that. And uh, look forward to the race review on Monday. Other than that, this is Race Craze, and we'll see you all in the next Diecast Review.